Hey everybody, this is Patrick GMT and I'm partnering with Chegg. And here we're gonna talk about areas and distances. So this would be a topic that you would encounter typically in a, I would say a second semester calculus course. So we're just gonna do, uh, again, a little introduction to finding areas under functions. Uh, we'll talk about the area defined as a limit because eventually we'll use that limit to compute areas. I won't use the limit in this video. We will derive it, but in some uh, uh, other videos, we'll actually use that limit definition to compute the exact area. And then we'll just talk about how distance traveled is related to area. Okay, so the idea here, and just as I say, it's not complicated. It's one of these things, maybe the notation seems a little cumbersome if you're not used to it, but the idea is really simple. Okay, so again, we've got a curve, okay, y equals f of x. And notice that this curve, I want to point out that the y values are all positive, right? So that's going to be something important down the road. But for now, just we're trying to find this area, my really poorly shaded area between the function and the x-axis. That's what we're going to try to compute. Now, the problem is, right, this, this function's all curvy. So how do we do that? I mean, if we just had a bunch of, uh, you know, if our... If our curve was just a bunch of straight line segments, we could use geometry and come up with it pretty easily. But this is the problem, that it's, that it's, that it's not straight line segments. All we're going to do is we're just going to break up. So, okay, we're, we're doing this from the interval A to B. I'm just going to break this up into N pieces, and you can decide, you know, what N is. Now, they're all supposed to be the same width, and we label that width delta X, okay? So all of these have width delta X. Okay, so the way that we get a value for delta x, well, we would just take the length of the interval, which is b minus a, and we would divide it by n, the number of approximating rectangles we're going to use. So how do we use these rectangles to approximate the area? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, well, I'll look at my first interval first, interval first. and what I'm going to do is, okay, so if you think about... Let me try to extend this up where it hits the function. We can see where uh, this point on the left is hitting the function. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make a, right, a rectangle. Now, I've got freedom on how I make my rectangle. If I use the right endpoint of this interval and I extend it over that little section, notice I'm gonna get, well, again, an area of a rectangle. Well, I can compute the area of the rectangle really easily. So let's do a, a few more things notation-wise. Typically, the, the value x sub a, or a is gonna be your value x sub zero. Your b value, we're gonna, we're gonna label that gener generically x sub n, because again, we're, we're chopping this up in, into n pieces. So my next point would be x sub one, my next point here would be x sub two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, maybe generically, this is the point x sub i minus one. This is the point x sub i, I don't know. And then eventually we keep going and we get up to the last point x sub n. Okay, so the area of this first rectangle, notice that the area of this first rectangle, it would be the width of the rectangle, which is delta x. And to get the height, I'm using the right endpoint. Well, that's the y value of the function. So I would plug in that right endpoint, x sub one, and I would multiply that by delta x, and that's gonna give me the area of this rectangle. Okay, well, now I just keep doing this. We go to over to the, uh, my next interval. So let's look at this interval for between x, sub, x1 and x2. Sub again, I'm just going to use the right endpoint. I'm going to extend it over. And again, I would get another rectangle. So I could compute its value, the area of that, by taking f of x sub 2 times delta x. And I would just keep doing this. I would cover my entire... Uh, region in these rectangles, and eventually I'll get up to the last one, right? That would be f of x sub n multiplied by delta x. And again, I'm using right endpoints. A lot of times when you see this stuff, they'll talk about using right endpoints or left endpoints, and we'll talk about that. Well, the idea is if I cover this entire, uh, if I if I cover this this region with all of these rectangles, this is going to be an approximation, right? This is going to be an approximation to the real area. That's the idea. You're just finding areas of rectangles. That's all you're doing. The true area you can prove. What we do is, it's, it's the idea that you use in all of these topics. You, you, you come up with an approximation. Hey, we've got that. And now you just start making the approximations better and better and better. And the way that we do that is we use more and more rectangles. So the way we use more and more rectangles, well, first let's write um, this expression a little bit more compactly. 
So that's the summation from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. That says add up all the areas of those rectangles. Well, if I use more and more rectangles, if I keep chopping it up, I'm going to let the limit as n goes to infinity. That's how we define the area. Now, it's going to turn out computing this can be a little tricky, but that's going to be part of the magic of calculus. You'll see that there's a nice, easy way to do it. So let's look at a, a simple example here. Um, and these are pretty typical. There's, if you can do one of these, you can do all of them, I think. It's just maybe the arithmetic's a little more tedious. Okay, so find an expression to compute the area bounded by the function f of x equals 1 over x. So you may remember that 1 over x looks something like this. And there's a section down here too, but... I'm not worried about that because we're just looking at this over the interval from 1 to 4. And we're going to use six rectangles here. So let's see. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That looks like six rectangles. And we're going to approximate the area both by using right endpoints and left endpoints. So if we do right endpoints, first notice that my delta x value, that would be b minus a, over n, and in this case, again, we specified n to be equal to 6. That's going to be 3 over 6, or 1 half. So each, each of these rectangles has a width of 1 half. So this would be the point, if I start at 1, this would be 1.5, the next one would be 2, 2.5, 3, and then 3.5. If I find the area of a rectangle using the right endpoint, well, that's going to be what we did in my, my very first example. They were to be my first rectangle. And the area of that rectangle, the area of that rectangle, well, I would take that point, the right end point is uh, 1.5. And again, I would multiply that by delta x. And I would do this, my next rectangle, the height would be when I plug in 2, again, multiply it by delta x. Then I would have to plug in 2.5, multiply that by delta x. I would plug in 3, multiply that by delta x. I would plug in 3.5, multiply that by delta x. And my very last rectangle, I would plug in 4 and multiply by delta x. So there's my very last rectangle. And I would add all of those up to, to uh, get an approximation for the area. And notice now we've got a function, right? We've got our function uh, is 1 over x. So I can even go back and replace, you know, um, for example, I can go back and start really uh, substituting in the correct values. I guess let me, let's leave that there for a second. So if I plug in uh, 1.5, I would have 1 over 1.5, because again, that's what I'm plugging in for x. We know what delta x is equal to. That's what we figured out here a second ago. That's just going to be 1 half. And then we would do the same thing. I would plug 2 in. Well, that would be 1 over 2. That would be the height. And then, again, the width is also uh, 1 half. And I would do this all the way until I get to the very last uh, value. That's when I plug 4 in. So I would have 1 over 4, again, since my function is 1 over x. And again, I would multiply that by the width, which is 1 half. And I'll let you compute that, but that's the idea. So it's just a, a little bit of arithmetic here. The only thing that's going to change if you use left endpoints there's only one little thing that's going to change. Notice now if I'm using left endpoints, well, previously my first rectangle looked like this because I used the right endpoint of that interval. Well, now I'm going to use the left endpoint of this interval. So my very first value, when I go to compute this, now the height is going to be when I plug in the value of 1. And again, I would just multiply this by 1 half. And then I would have 1.5 multiplied by 1 half. Eventually, I would get down to my very last rectangle, but for that interval, the height, again, is going to come from that left endpoint, and that's going to be when we plug in 3.5, and again, I could multiply that by delta x, which is 1 half, and the same thing, just replace, you know, f of 1, f of 1.5, etc., by, again, using this specific function that we have, and that's all you would do. Notice in this case, um, when I use left endpoints, sometimes they'll say, is it an over and underestimate? It just depends on the shape of your graph. It, it, it may be hard to tell. And this one, it would be pretty clear that we would have an overestimate because all of our rectangles, right, are, are, are above the curve. That's for using left endpoints. 
in this example. It's not in general. It's just for this example, left endpoints would give you an overestimate. And I think we saw when we used right endpoints, it was a little bit uh, too small, not enough. That would be an underestimate for, again, this example. Okay, and let's just talk about how this relates, you know, when they talk about distance traveled, it's the exact same idea. You, you, you compute these the exact same way, but hey, now, you know, now we're putting this into a physical setting, so maybe we can see some use for it. So I'm going to just do some hand waving here and try to convince you. So suppose your function f of t tells you your velocity in miles per hour. So maybe you, you, you get all this data, you take a trip, maybe you're in your car, maybe you start at 1 p.m. and I don't know, you drive till... 8 p.m. or something. Who, who cares? And suppose, again, that this these, these y values are telling you your velocity. Let's suppose, um, I don't know, let's break this up. So there's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So suppose we're looking at this um, per hour. Okay, suppose we're using right endpoints to, to calculate the area underneath this curve. Okay, so if I use the right endpoint, I would get this area. What does that area represent in this physical situation? Suppose that um, your velocity at this instant in time, so okay, at 2 p.m., suppose your velocity was 40 miles per hour. Well, what does the area of that rectangle mean? Well, you've traveled, we're using this height of 40, you've traveled for one hour, if you're going 40 miles an hour for one hour, it says you've traveled roughly, traveled roughly 40 miles in the first hour. That's all that would represent. It tells you the distance traveled. So again, this is the cool thing because the function is telling you about velocity. This area is now gonna start telling us an estimate for the distance traveled. And we could do the same thing, you know, over the second interval. Okay, suppose at that point, suppose you're going, I don't know, 50 miles an hour. Well, what does that tell you? It says you traveled approximately 50 miles an hour for a total of one hour. So that's gonna be the distance traveled, you know, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. roughly. And you could just keep doing this until you get to the very last one. Um, you would, again, just compute a height and a width and again, that's the idea. So when I add up all of these rectangles, I'm gonna get, uh, when I add all of these up, this is gonna be approximately equal to the distance traveled. So that's the idea. Um, you're just finding areas of rectangles using left endpoints, using right endpoints. You'll have to chop up your interval, B minus A over N. Typically, again, when you first see these questions, they'll specify some value of N. Um, you'll be given some random function that you can just plug those endpoints into to compute it. And again, there's nothing special about left endpoints or right endpoints. You could use a midpoint from each interval. Um, you can. It turns out you can use any old point in, 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 as long as you're taking one from each interval. That's gonna be the important part and we'll see that again later. But again, all you're doing, just finding areas of rectangles, depending on the physical situation, like we saw in this very last example, it does tell you useful information uh, about, about things that we'll often want to know about. Again, it, it's, I'll say it one more time. It's cool. You, 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 all you know is this velocity function, but you're getting all of this extra information. And yeah, it, 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 this has so many uses in mathematics. It's profoundly useful. So I'll leave it at that.